greetings, and yeah, this time at LGR we've got a bit of a different thing than I usually cover because I feel like it, dang it, this is the JVC GRSXM 250U, a compact super VHS camcorder that is still new in the box. Never been fully unsealed or used. <laughs> I, I don't know, I picked this up some years ago and for whatever reason, now is the time to open it up. But uh, yeah, this thing right here is a compact analog camcorder from the inventor of VHS, JVC, the Victor Company of Japan. And uh, yeah, this particular model was first launched in January of 2003, yeah, but it was based on a body design and overall feature set that had been around for several years by that point. Uh, this one though went for 249 US dollars at the time it was released, which is one of the lowest priced camcorders on the market back then in early 2003. Really only some high eight camcorders cost less than this brand new. And if you're up on your LGR lore, this might look kind of familiar. So it's not exactly the same, but LGR actually started off being filmed on a VHSC camcorder. This right here, a JVC GRAXM225, something that I picked up from Goodwill for like 10 bucks or something in 2007 or so. I don't even really remember, but I got it for really cheap and it was the OG LGR camera. All LGR videos and even pre LGR videos on YouTube were shot with this camera for, I don't know, three or four years. And this thing really got used before I got it. And of course, after I got it, I mean, it just started falling apart. You know, the zoom no longer really works at all. And the mechanisms inside are really slow and janky now. And the audio doesn't record and just all kinds of issues that make it pretty unusable. So back when I did my LGR 10th anniversary video in 2019, I thought it'd be cool to have a similar one, but like totally brand new. So that's when I picked up this SXM250U, which is uh, in the same sort of body style, but it's silver instead of gray or black, and it has a better zoom. And it can also record to SVHSC tape instead of just VHSC as indicated not only by all of the Super VHS branding on the box, but also just the model name itself. So the GR, that's just the prefix that JVC used for their camcorders back then, but SX signifies that it is an SVHSC model. The VHSC one was AX, like the old one that I had. And then the M signifies that it has an LCD, but uh, yeah, SXM, Super VHS, and that was a format introduced with the HRS 7000 VCR back in 1987. Um, but yeah, the whole format of SVHS increased luminance bandwidth, producing a supposed 60% improvement in luminance picture detail as demonstrated on this JVC marketing material from back in the day. I mean, you know, it, it is an improvement, but it's pretty minor, especially when viewing it on your standard consumer television set. But hey, horizontal resolution of 420 vertical lines versus VHS is 240. I mean, you know, that's something, I guess. The chroma or color level remains the same. It still very much looks like VHS either way. Which, by the way, was really approaching the end of the line, especially with camcorders in 2003. JVC's analog camcorders were pretty much going away entirely. Digital camcorders coming along, taking over the show. And by digital, that, that still often meant tape. It was just recording to videotape digitally instead of analog. So you had digital eight tapes and mini DV tapes taking over the show. And in my experience, mini DV tape camcorders, usually paired with an MMC or SD card slot for taking digital photos. Yeah, those were the current hotness, even though they cost twice as much as VHSC. And that's actually the type of camcorder that we had back then as well. We bought one of those specifically to go on out of the country trips and stuff, but it died after just a few short years of use. Hence me picking up a cheap VHSC camcorder at Goodwill whenever I wanted to start making YouTube videos. Now in terms of the specific model that we have here, we're gonna unbox, uh, yeah, the SXM250U. It was not the very last model JVC made with this format. They also had the SXM260 and 265 in 2004, which uh, had a 700X digital zoom up from the 600 on the one we have. But yeah, I think that is more than enough context. Let's go ahead and get this open. Uh, although it has been 
open before, just the uh, the box itself. None of the contents have been unsealed, but uh, yeah, when I first grabbed this, I wanted to make sure everything was inside. And indeed it is. So first up, the whole selection of documentation and things. We have a cassette adapter for playing the tapes, the compact ones on your VCR. An accessories packet here with different types of batteries. We've got the camcorder one there. This one, uh, I just presume is for the tape adapter since it's motorized. Yeah, all kinds of things. <laughs> I really like how even the cardboard packaging is VHS-like in its design. Didn't need to be, but they did it anyway. Oh yeah. And the camera itself, and I, I can't wait any longer. I've been wanting to see this. <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah, that still smells nice and new. That untouched hand strap right there. Oh, this is <laughs> this is pretty neat. These are normally so full of different types of uh, hand grime and, you know, the eye grease and, you know, all kinds of things. Oh, that, that, that feels good too. After that being broken on my, uh, the one I had back then for so long. That's, that's nice. I actually feel one of those working again. This is sweet. So in order to get the tapes out of there, we will need some power, either from the battery that who knows if that'll still work or, uh, should be, where's the AC on this? Yeah, or DC rather, right there. So AC to DC adapter. Oh, it's just so nice to see this, this finish and everything, uh, not all scratched and scuffed up. You know, this this sort of plastic, or I don't know if there's paint on it or what. Yeah, these, these get scuffed and scratched up real easily because it's kind of a soft coating or soft plastic. Anyway, high resolution. <laughs> I mean, you know, and does this one, uh, I guess this one doesn't have the lens cap. Like the one I used had this built in. I always thought that was quite handy. Uh, this one has an external one. So let's go into the accessories here and see what we got. Okay, well, there is uh, the just double A for the adapter for your VCR, Sunrise High Power Battery, Asahi Dry Battery, no mercury added. Got our strap here, or shoulder strap. Uh, here's the camera battery. Again, looking delightfully fresh. There is our lens cap. Nice little JVC logo on there, and even that has got a protective cover on it. So fresh. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't like it as much as the one that's built in over there, but eh, better than nothing. Not even gonna bother with the shoulder strap, but uh, lovely looking. Got that nice JVC logo on there. I've just always liked that logo. The gold and the red and the black looks very nice together. A much more compact AC adapter here. Oh yeah, that's, that's much smaller than the, actually, well, kind of makes sense since uh, that one is also a uh, battery charger. But yeah, just a, a little wall adapter here. So cool. We'll see if the battery charges. Never know being unused, but not gonna hold my breath or anything. Of course, we got the VHS adapter here, so. Mm, so pristine. Oh yeah. Smells pretty, pretty good. Uh, and on that note, I do actually have some sealed VHSC tapes. Unfortunately, I don't have any S VHSC tapes. I just I never had any back in the day and uh, don't have any now either. But anyway, shame the case is already cracked on this before I even open it up. Yeah, Library Master. EHG high energy magnetite. This is gonna go in there and then the, uh, the motor brings the tape out to the back. So let's see if the battery uh, does its thing. Where's the battery go? Uh -huh. Oh, wow. So that still holds a charge, at least enough to get the motor going. 
always liked these things. <laughs> just playing around with them as a kid probably more than I should. I just like seeing the motors and the arms move. Well, not the most graceful sounding there, but uh, still. It's working, which is great. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, we got documentation, but whatever. Oh, it's one of these annoying fold out ones. Oh, that's so dumb. Uh, basically, it's a VHS camcorder. It's got, it's got features, uh, pretty much everything you'd expect. Even got built in titles. Although I was reading that the, uh, the title maker or the, yeah, the thing that lets you display text on there, you can't actually customize uh, the text anymore. You just select from presets only. So sort of a downgrade compared to certain previous VHSC camcorders. 90 days limited warranty and uh, parts for one year. All right. Get this sucker plugged into the wall, see if we get a charge or anything at all. Who knows? Just gotta test basic functionality and then, I don't know, we're able to record some things and see how it goes. Lovely little display there. Nice, going straight into the demonstration mode. Oh, and I do see a charge uh, light up there when it's turned off, but yeah, I'm gonna go and start that over again. I honestly forgot that camcorders pretty much always had this going in store. So let's just watch this for a bit. Okay, I needed to be like pointed at something because it's doing all these effects demonstrations. Oh well, yeah, that's more like it. All those effects and wipes and different transitions, things that I personally never used, uh, at least later on. I'm sure I might have experimented with something like that with a video camera as a kid, but <laughs> just they were super cheesy. Oh my goodness, that stabilization demo. That's so over the top. It's sitting there stationary, but ah, looks so much more stable when you artificially stop shaking the image. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, the demo program looks like that just, uh, yeah, you, you just touch any of the inputs and uh, it'll, it'll stop doing that. So we have, a, I think, you know, I don't actually know how much of an actual optical zoom we have in here, but we have a 600X digital, which is absurd. Big question is though, uh, does the tape mechanism still work as it should? Yeah. What? Ah, gotta push that in. Yeah, that sounds correct. I exactly the same as uh, my old one. Wow, dude. Okay, guess we can just record a thing real quick. All right, this is uh, an initial test. 
of the JVC whatever the heck this model is. Just listening to that tape mechanism. Yeah. Oh man, there's so many more features on the top. Or really, I guess it's mostly the same features, it's just on the one that I had, it was uh, all on the back instead because the battery went on the side instead of the top. So you had a battery right there and then all those buttons right here are just up top here. So we'll go into playback mode here. Oh yeah, sounds nice and healthy. <laughs> nice. A bit warbly there at the beginning, but I mean, it's also the very start of the tape, so. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. It seems to be as fantastic as you'd hope for a new old stock. I mean, you just never know, though. I've had <laughs> some camcorders have picked up or messed around with a Goodwill, and it's like you think they're perfect. They look brand new. They basically have all the packaging and everything and they look untouched, but they just don't work. Um, things die. But anyway, this seems to be great. So uh, let's, I don't know, tape some stuff. I'm going to uh, let that charge the battery as well. So it'd be nice to take it out around the house or outside or wherever and let that do its thing and come back in a bit and enjoy some VHS camcorder goodness. All right, the charge light stopped flashing. So let's just, Get that on, and just unplug it. Ooh. Oh no, they're still going. Okay, thought it might have died there for a second, but uh, so far, so good. And it is showing that we have a full battery, but you never know what that actually means. Let's just take a look at the buttons and things and the menus or whatever while we're uh, waiting to see if the battery just randomly dies or something. Yeah, bunch of controls on the right hand side as well as mostly on the top of course our microphone and our light right there all right bit of subject matter there let's make sure we're in manual mode and uh yeah looks like on top mostly it's just these visual effects that you know, we saw the examples of earlier with that demo program uh yeah a whole bunch of those uh, fades and wipes <laughs> that just take effect in between shots as you're playing pausing or you know doing that whole recording routine back and forth playback controls just basic transport stuff for when you're looking at footage you're zooming in and out five second record just recording a clip uh, manual focus that's interesting i don't i'm sure i used this for doing like lgr stuff but yeah there it is just like not focusing and then yeah honestly the, the focus range is so wide and it's so quick to, to autofocus. I've mostly probably just left it on autofocus back in the day, if I recall. Uh, but yeah, the menu. Oh, well, there's our stabilizer. We do want that on for what we're going to do in a bit. Uh, manual white balance. Uh, titles, yes. These are the predetermined titles because this is, uh, like I said earlier, not one where you can customize them anymore, unfortunately. You just have to choose pre-selected ones. But that'll just display some text on the screen. Uh, let's see here. Oh man, all kinds of things. This is a, some sort of, kind of like a, a low level light adjuster thing there I was reading about. This is like a fake 16 by nine mode. It's, it's just silly. It just places black bars. Uh, SVHS ET. This is like an enhanced tape thing I was reading about, but it also causes all kinds of compatibility issues with certain VCRs. I don't know. Basically, it lets you use regular VHS-C tape with SVHS enhancements. Date and time and, I don't know, and all kinds of things. Yep, pretty standard stuff. There's that demo. Turn that off. We don't need that anymore. That's about it. And, well, that battery is still working after a few minutes of testing there. So I'm just going to say that we're good to go. So uh, <laughs> let's just take this out and about and record some random stuff to tape. Well, it is a lovely fall day, late morning. Yeah, perfect for some camcorder fun. 
And yes, I did attach the uh, shoulder strap because I'm going to be taking it out places. And yeah, just take advantage of this lovely day and, I don't know, go around town and record some random stuff. Try to get away from leaf blowers. Uh, yeah, I think I'll mostly be shooting in auto, but we also have some manual stuff to take a look at. So yeah, while it's nice and colorful on that LCD, on the viewfinder, not so much. That is a little CRT in there as well. So you're getting the refresh rate going on. Black and white. A pleasant morning out today. Autumn leaves looking all autumnal. And get some air appropriate vehicle coverage. <laughs> That's correct on VHS. Except for everything passing in the background. So here's the place they used to have the uh, Circus Man statue, although they still have a number of other, uh, I don't even know what you would call these, sculptures? Or sort of statues? <laughs> Bits of Americana? A lot of fiberglass uh, figures and things. I don't know, it just seems like something you'd film with a VHS camera on the side of the road. <laughs> or, or with old digital cameras. Uh, as I have done so many times before. But yeah, circus guy is gone. How sad. All right, here in scenic downtown, I actually do like this area quite a lot. Photograph things many times here. Ah, well, seemed like it'd be fun to video too. Such zoom lens. Mm, zoom lens. Zoom in on so many things. Oh my goodness. That's just 50x. Okay, let's try the full 600x digital zoom. Just to see. Oh my goodness, that's useless. <laughs> the stabilizer is on too. Oh my word. Wow, that's dumb. Yeah, just stick to the optical, as always. What, what is this? Box or... <laughs> no idea. Wow. The things you see in Hendersonville. Finally got rid of that busted up old Jaguar in there. The Rodson Mall sign is still there though, as is the abandonment of, of all of it. Yeah, dude. I mean, I don't know, maybe some business is still in there, but it's... I've never seen any activity here. Pretty narrow FOV, considering where I'm standing. It's like, ugh, I feel kind of cramped shooting. But that's okay. Well, that was a little fun diversion. Let's 
to go back home and, I don't know, film some squirrels or something. Right, back home. I don't have to change clothes. It got oddly warm out here, but yeah. Very pleasant day despite the <laughs> leaf blowers. Yeah, it is the season. All right. Get this Spider Man 2 going. Excited to finally play this. I haven't had time. Look at my weird pumpkin. It's got such an oddly girthy stem. I don't know why it's like that. That's why I picked it. You know, this stabilization isn't the most stable, is it? look way more vibrant on camera than they do in real life. Good grief. Like the color and everything. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like oversaturating my footage. I don't know. Things do uh, look slightly Blair Witchy. <laughs> As you'd expect, I guess. Uh, yeah, I gotta try this at night. In the woods. Well, we got that light on the front too, right? I'm finding it pretty enjoyable just to record. Nothing of substance outside, simply because I have a battery. Spider-Man done yet? Nope. We're getting there. There we go. Oh, this brings back some. LGR memories. <laughs> now I have two of them. That's a different model, but yeah, that's the uh, Presario 425. Filmed a video on uh, this thing using my uh, older JVC camcorder from back in the day, like 15 years ago. Yeah, dude. I wonder how my neon sign looks. I love the look of neon on VHS. That looks awesome. Does a really, it always does a really good job like compensating. I don't know. Spider-Man 2 time. Ah, it feels good to play again. <laughs> oh, these games are awesome. I've missed this. Okay, and because it's dark, we got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yup. Well, the light works. Mm. This is delightful. Okay, well, it's just my backyard. And it looks so creepy in through, the, <laughs> through the camera. It's wonderful. I'm so glad this battery works. It honestly just makes such a huge difference being able to take it around. I, like I said, the battery, I don't think it ever worked on my old one. It's been many, many years since I filmed or taped my VHS camcorder with a working battery. Let's see if the light turns on. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, there's something about VHS that makes me want Pizza Hut, so <laughs> here we go. Mmm, VHS Pizza. I'll take it. Well, we sure do have some stuff recorded, so yeah, let's go ahead and get it all rewinded. And eh, I feel like plugging it into a TV just because that feels like such part of the experience. There's something 
oddly magical almost about watching stuff he recorded on a CRT. I don't know, it was different than looking at an LCD or an OLED. And yeah, being that it only records in mono, we only have that right there for audio. And uh, earlier I was using uh, S-Video to directly capture the footage, but we'll just use composite here on this TV. All right. I think it's number two. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, that classic blue background with the VHS, VCR looking text. Uh, playback is on the camera. I think it's that. Here we go. Out today. Autumn leaves looking all autumnal. Yeah. Get some air appropriate vehicle coverage. <laughs> yeah. Looks correct on VHS. It really does look correct on VHS. This back. is uh this is this is surreal because I just recorded this footage. And it looks like I recorded it 20 years ago. Um, and I know that is entirely to be expected. That's kind of the whole reason you may ever want to record on VHS, but still, it looks darn good in that not, not good way. Uh, but it, seriously, this, I don't know, like even for VHS, just the standard VHS tape, not doing any of the uh, super enhancement stuff, this looks, that looks great. Pausing, of course, does not, <laughs> but you know, it's VHS. What are you going to do? Uh, yeah, dude, that's, I'm just sitting here with the biggest grin on my face. This is so weird. It's weird to be nostalgic for this or, you know, just to even want to return to this because, you know, when I was actually using one of these cameras to record my videos for LGR, it genuinely was because I had nothing, nothing else and no better option. And this just happened to be cheap the lowest cost thing that I could get that had the flip around LCD screen so I could see myself as I was recording, which was, you know, uh, pretty uh, <laughs> pretty much what you want for making YouTube videos and stuff back then and today. And, you know, you had to pay however many, 150, 200 bucks to get like a flip camera or whatever, which is still pretty reasonable, I guess, but I, I didn't have even that much money. So, <laughs> I mean, it certainly did the trick. And man, looking through a CRT like this, well, except when I'm doing this awful digital zoom, I still don't know why people wanted this feature. It just looks terrible when you go over anything beyond 50X. But anyway, I don't really know what else to say, except it's just, it's just very strange feeling for me to have been doing this long enough to where this wasn't the most outdated, unthinkable thing back when I first started YouTube. I mean, you know, the camcorder was like four or five years old and you know, I was posting stuff on YouTube and it looked Fine, I guess, because most uh, people were uploading in 240p or 360p anyway in 2007, 2008, before LGR. And then by the time LGR came around, you know, 2009 into 2010 is when I used it, uh, it was definitely looking pretty dated and pretty bad. And my capture setup wasn't great, but whatever, dude. It got me started. And I am very much grateful <laughs> that this kind of thing was an option uh, for someone with no money. Uh, my goodness, this footage, though. It looks so different from even just compared to the capture from earlier. It's just such a different thing seeing it on CRTs. Of course, we can get those delightful live images as well. Heck yeah. Always like doing this with the camcorders back in the day. Let's try something here. All right, so anyway, um, I guess that's about it for this video. I just wanted to end on an appropriate uh, camcorder-esque note here and uh, just say how much I've oddly enjoyed screwing around with this, not only just the unboxing of one of these things, basically brand new and uh, re-experiencing it um, as fresh as possible. But uh, yeah, just going out and filming or taping really <laughs> around town with one of these with a battery that still actually works and holds a good charge. I have not had that experience in a very long time with an old camcorder. So uh, I don't know, I had a lot of fun and hope you did too. And uh, if you did, uh, great. <laughs> Stick around for my other videos, which are usually not about these type of things, but uh, this just happened to be, so this is weird watching myself on a CRT. Um, anyway, yeah, if uh, you had one of these things or something very similar to it back in the day, which 
statistically you probably did or knew somebody that did because these were exceedingly popular for a while. Uh, yeah, let me know your experiences and if you've ever used a VHS camcorder to upload to YouTube back in the day yourself, because um, some of us genuinely did and that's how we got started. That's why I'm here. So yeah, that's all for this one. Thank you very much for watching LGR.